All right, going to go over a headshot here. This is at Nani Mel. Uh, she's a model here from San Antonio, and we did some shots for her digitals uh, for her agency. Uh, with these shots, you really, you don't want to, uh, you want to keep it real basic. You don't want to do a lot of editing. Uh, they want to see the model as she actually is. They don't want a real Instagrammy, super edited, you know, photo. Um, sometimes they don't want the model to wear any makeup at all. She's got a little bit here. Uh, just real natural look, though. Nothing um, excessive uh, makeup by uh, incredible Cynthia Hernandez here in San Antonio. Shout out to her. Uh, so I uh, got this. I uh, shot this with a Sony uh, 90 millimeter uh, 2.8 macro. Uh, it's probably one of the sharpest lenses out there, if not the sharpest lens. Um, depends on the model, how sharp you want it, though. You know, if they don't have uh, real good skin, you might want to shoot it at, you know, uh, something that's maybe not as sharp and shoot it, shoot it a shallow depth of field. kind of softens the skin a little bit. Uh, I shot this one at 4.5, which is, uh, uh, I think I'd started at 5.6 and, you know, I was just rocking the aperture a little bit. Uh, playing with the the exposure and my lighting ended up at 4.5 on this shot so uh, I lit this you can see from the catch lights um, not directly uh, I didn't have a, a beauty dish with me so I was using a, a soft box but it had a it's one of those glows with a beauty dish plate inside of it um, I don't mind a little bit of hotness though here, you know, there's a little bit of, now I did, I was lighting actually, I had a light off to the side too, sort of a backlight to light the hair a little bit. And some of that's coming in here, some rim as well, and on this side as well. So, um, real subtle, but uh, it does add a little bit. Uh, but you can see from the catch lights, I didn't have it directly overhead, like a, you know, a beauty dish configuration you would have. It's, but it is just a little left of center, real close. And, uh, if you've got a model that, um, doesn't have real good skin, uh, that's a good way to, um, not, um, bring that out. You know, it, it, uh, when you shoot kind of at a 45, degree angle to the side the model doesn't have real good skin you'll get a lot of the the imperfections will be much more apparent because when you're shooting off to the side you get shadows right and so if you have raised areas bumps and things like that on the skin they're going to be more apparent because they cast a little shadow uh, and she's got great skin though uh, that's not what I'm saying here but just any imperfections at all you know like you will not see you know, like this has a tiny, maybe a tiny bit of shadow underneath it here. But if I had shot off to the side or whatever, and she had a lot of bumps and stuff like that, it would just uh, be much more apparent. So when you're shooting straight on, it kind of minimizes the imperfections in the skin. So she's got really nice, healthy skin, though. I mean, her skin is almost perfect. I mean, just looks really good. Um, beautiful hair, too. Beautiful long hair. Uh, so just... Uh, a lot of fun to shoot with too. She's a great model. All right, so let's get into it. So I'm not going to do a lot. I've already done the basic edits in Lightroom. Uh, let me just copy them here. I'll reset to what it was straight out of camera. So really straight out of camera. Uh, almost good to go. Really, I did a I cropped it a little bit. Um, there we go. So I cropped it in a little bit just to center her a little better. Uh, I brought the exposure down just a tiny bit, but I brought the highlights up and uh, didn't mess with the shadows. The whites, uh, let me see what happens when I, the whites are not really making that much of a difference. I could bring the whites up just a hair and I brought the blacks down just for a little bit of contrast. I didn't actually bring the contrast up. Let's see. I could bring it up just a hair. Uh, and then the texture I'll bring down as opposed to using like a skin smoothing brush. Um, I'll bring the texture down, which doesn't necessarily impact the, the clarity, but it, it will kind of has kind of a smoothing effect on the skin just a little bit. If I turn that off, uh, you can see, uh, it's, it's real subtle. So I bring it down just a little bit. There's a little, just kind of softens things up just a little bit. And it's such a sharp image to begin with. I mean, uh, just super sharp. I mean, you could 
just zoom way in and with that lens it's just amazing so i could go into like 200 percent here and it's just sharp as a tack especially at 4.5 so a little bit of texture bring that down just a little bit um, but i don't like to use skin softening it just it looks it doesn't look good I, in my opinion, I think it looks a little bit fake. You could do it, depending on the model skin, you could do maybe a little light skin softening. Some, sometimes, occasionally, I'll do it on their legs, you know, just to kind of give it a smooth sheen to the legs, you know. Vibrance, I, just standard practice, I bring it up between uh, usually 15 and 20. Saturation, I leave alone. And then I just come down, I don't mess with the colors, I just come down. I didn't even sharpen this. It didn't need it. I guess I could you know, sharpen a little bit here. And I'm holding down the author option key as I'm dragging these sliders. So this is the one where it really counts. Um, hold down the alter option. I'm dragging this over so that only the parts in white are being sharpened and everything else is not. If you're sharpening the entire picture like, like this, you can't tell what's sharp and what's not sharp. And so when you just sharpen certain things and other things are not sharp, you notice the sharpened part more, right? It stands out more. And I don't really want to sharpen the skin any more than, than I did because, you know, um, I brought the texture down a little bit to, and so if I'm going to sharpen, that kind of negates that, right? So, uh, good tip there to just use that masking on your sharpening and holding down the alter option key will let you see the mask. That's what brings up this black and white part. So it's kind of cool. So I'm just sharpening really the eyes and the lips. And, you know, some of this up here gets sharpened. But the skin is not getting sharpened. Uh, so that's really it. I don't do much else in Lightroom. I mean, it really does not look um, that much different. I'll reset it. I mean, it's not a huge difference. So. So what I'll do now, uh, I, I could do, you know, the blemishes in Lightroom. I could use the spot removal to, tool. It's just kind of slow and clunky, the spot removal tool in Lightroom. In, in Photoshop, it's just, it's much quicker. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and edit this in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. I actually shut down Lightroom because it's a memory hog. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do... Uh, I, I like to use, you know, as I said, instead of in Lightroom using the spot removal tool, I'll come over here and use this one. It looks like a little Band-Aid, the spot healing brush tool. It's much quicker. And then I can use my right and left bracket keys on the keyboard. Uh, those are next to the P key to resize my, my tool. And then I can come up here and I can just get some of these little blends here really quickly. And actually, I'm working on the background. That's That's bad bad editor here so let me go i'm going to create you know normally just for the spot healing brush you would just hit the plus and create a blank layer but i also may use the patch tool and the patch tool requires that you have a, a, a layer with a full image in it not a blank layer uh, so i'm going to delete this layer and i'm going to hit Control j on the keyboard and that will create a copy of the background layer and it has pixels in it. For, for whatever reason, you can't use this, this patch tool unless you have a layer with pixels in it like this one. As opposed to when I hit this plus, it'll create a blank layer. See, that doesn't have pixels in it. The spot healing brush tool here, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You can use it on either or. So. Um, why that is the case, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking when you're using this tool here, um, you were, for example, let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe I wanted to grab this right here and I'm going to select the area and then I'm going to move it off to an area that I want to replace it with. Maybe it just it needs these pixels to do that. That's all I know. If any of you guys know technically why that is. It's one of those gotchas in Photoshop that you just learn from doing, right? I've created blank layers before and I'm trying to use the patch tool and it's not working and I don't understand why. And that's because it needs a layer with pixels in it. So, But I find using the spot removal tool a little bit faster. 
and it doesn't the spot removal tool works 99 percent of the time to get what you're getting and sometimes you know it's just sampling from a nearby area i've got content aware as my type for my spot healing so it's it's just when i'm doing this it's sampling from an area nearby and it's replacing which to me is similar to the patch tool so i don't know why one requires can can work on either or an empty layer or a layer with pixels and the other one needs a layer with pixels doesn't make sense to me but that's the way it works so i'm not going to ask any more questions about it <laughs> all right so as i said i mean i'm being real nitpicky here and just getting you know some of these things her skin is just fantastic as it is and this is I don't know if this is really, you know, it's kind of a beauty shot, I guess, but I'm not doing the full beauty edit. You know, there's not a ton of makeup and all that. It's just a real natural headshot, right? So I don't, and I don't want it to be, to look super Instagrammy and edited, you know, so, but I will come in and just get some of these little details. That's where I get the eyebrows. I mean, her eyebrows are almost perfect, too. Just get a little, little spots there. So that looks pretty good. Get that one right there. You just want to get little strays right here. These are not as noticeable, but I'll get a few of them. Okay. And that about handles most of the blems, I think. Like I said, her skin is just darn near perfect. You can tell she takes real good care of it. Got some real little spots there. Another thing you can do is another technique. You, you know, I've used the patch tool a little bit. You know, you can, we've used the spot removal tool, the patch tool. You can grab a spot, kind of move it over. And it fixes it. Another method is to grab the clone stamp tool and make sure your flow is like down to like 10 percent and like here's a little spot i can use my alter option to get the little sampling target there Tar click to target that spot and then come over here you can hover over it. you can see what the result will be but i'm at 10 percent, so i kind of have to rush it in all right that's another method this little red spot so I can target that right there and then come over here. Kind of just paint over that red spot. Now it's gone. You know, the, the spot healing brush, like I said, it works for 99% of things. But some things, uh, you always want to just be using the right tool. So this is just another tool. If the spot healing brush isn't working, you could use this one. You could use the patch tool. You know, sometimes, especially around the lips, you'll use the spot healing brush tool and like right here, and it'll make a dark pink spot and you keep trying it and trying it. Like if there's a bump there or something and it just doesn't work. And so you end up having to this where I use this. Actually, I'll come in and I'll just grab a spot right here next to it and I'll just brush over till it's gone. Okay. So, I mean, the, that's, that's really good. I don't usually take out like freckles and things like that because those are always going to be there. Um, but any kind of little bumps and things like that, those are temporary, so I take them out. Uh, you can kind of clean up the hair a little bit here. You know, you could spend a lot of time or a little bit of time, I think. You know, under the eyes, just fine. I don't see any issues there. Sometimes, you know, some people have allergies and things like that, and they always have dark circles under their eyes. I say allergies, I'm being nice. Sometimes people just party too much, right? <laughs> Stay up too late. Really bad for your, uh, your, if you're modeling, if you got a job, don't stay up, don't stay out drinking. You're going to dehydrate yourself and you'll come out there looking like a prune. See, I messed up that spot there. So if you mess up, hit control Z, let me go back and you can keep hitting control Z until 
Control Z just means undo, and I can hit it several times. So that wasn't the right tool for the job. Let me go back up to spot healing. And let me just, because I was just trying to get that little bump right there. So you got to watch what you're doing. Okay, cool. I'll hit Control Zero. That's my hot key to recenter the canvas. So really, I mean, I could stop here if I wanted to. I'm just going to actually hit Control S to save, or you can do File Save. Um, I could try uh, some dodging and burning if I wanted to. So I have an action to do that. If your actions bar is missing, you can always go up here to Window and hit Actions, and it comes back. So I have a dodge and burn action. It's just my own, um, but I'll create them. I'll create it from scratch. We'll just do it manually so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Dodge just means light and burn means darken. And the whole point of it is to uh, lessen the transitions between the dark and the light. Like th this is, everything is pretty, the transitions are pretty smooth. There's no harsh transitions, but it sort of has the effect of smoothing out the skin almost, but all you're doing is you're lightening and darkening. So you're not pushing pixels around. You're not changing the skin. You're just lightening and darkening spots of it. So you'll see kind of more what I mean here. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this down because I'm good with what we've done here. I don't want to save that layer. I haven't done anything that I think I might need to go back and change. So, so all right, dodge and burn is based on curves layers. So I'm going to come down here and click this little uh, icon here and I'm going to hit curves. I'll create one curves layer. That's going to be my burn layer. I'll name it burn. And this is the mask. I'm going to click on the mask and I'm going to choose control I to invert it. Actually, let me go back. I'll hit control I again. So that's how it is. So burn means darken. So I can click on this piece right here. That brings up where I can modify the levels here. And I just grab this in the middle and I bring it down about well, a little bit right there. You can see it, it darkened everything, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the mask here and I'm going to hit control I and that just turns off the effect. And what I'll do later is come in with a brush, a white brush, and I will paint the, the effect onto the mask. So that when the mask is black, that means don't show the burn right here. When it's white, it's going to show the burn, right? So I'll go back to black again. I don't want to burn the whole thing. I want to, with a brush, come in later, a white brush, and just paint in the burning real lightly. And I'll do the same thing with us. So I'll come over here, create another curves layer. I'll call this one Dodge. Next, I'm used to the Dodge being below the burn. And then I will click on the mask right here and I'll hit Control I. That means invert. And then I'll click right here so I can modify the levels and I will we'll make it brighter. And actually, let me show you what brighter does. I'll turn off the mask. So that's brighter. All right. So I've raised the the level here to about right there. And I just made everything bright. Well, I don't want everything to be bright. I want to paint on the brightness in places. So I'll click the mask and hit control I and that's dodge and burn. Now what you see people doing a lot is creating uh, different types of layers. I like to use, they're called helper layers. I'm going to create a black and white layer. That's what I use uh, to kind of help me out and see that just makes the, the whole picture black and white, but I can, the reds is where the skin tones, the reds and yellows. I can pull these reds back and I can see now the contrast better between the darks and the lights, right? So I can see better right here. This is light and this is darker and this is even darker. Here's a light spot. You know, it's lighter here and then it gets darker in here and then it's lighter here. So my job will be to kind of maybe lighten some of these these darker spots so the transitions are not as noticeable and like here's some dark spots here i would lighten these little spots here right um i may kind of see there's a, a almost it's not a hard line but you can there's a noticeable line here between the light part here and the darker part i might ease that transition a little bit 
so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll come up here and kind of just work on it for a little bit. Uh, and then some of the, the darker parts, like right here, uh, I'll probably lighten that a little bit. And then you also need to go into some of the super light parts and, and burn those. It's really, it's a matter of um, just practicing it, you know, to know where you need to dodge and burn. Sometimes I'm not even sure. I just get started and I start going. So I'm going to, I hold this, I'll show you what I did there. I'm going to select the first layer here. And then I'm going to hold my shift key down and select the last layer. And then I'm going to hit control G on the keyboard and that's going to group them together. Double click to rename the group. I'll call it D and B for dodge and burn. Okay. So going back to the dodge, I'm going to, I want to work on the mask. So make sure the mask is selected. Come over here, select your brush tool. Make sure that you have a hardness set to 0%. Okay. And make sure that this is set to white because I want to paint white on black to reveal the effect of dodge, which is to brighten. Okay. So if this is selected, it's not going to work. Select the mask. Okay. So I've got three steps. Select your four steps, really. Select your brush tool. Make sure you're at hardness 0%. That's number two. Number three, make sure you're set at white. You can switch them by hitting this little arrow. See that? Toggles them. Make sure it's set to white. Make sure that you've got the mask selected. If you're here, it's not going to work. Okay. And actually, when I go over here, I have gray loaded up in there. So that's, uh, so this is context sensitive. So make sure you have your mask selected and then you can toggle these black and white. Okay. All right. So, and I use a tablet for this process. So I'm going to switch over to my, use a Wacom tablet. Wacom, Wacom, I don't know what you call it, how you say it. And the, what did I say, there was four steps. The fifth step is to come up here and make sure your flow. At 100%, you start trying to lighten, subtly lighten a little piece here, and you're going to create a, see how this is way too much. So Control Z, we'll undo that. Uh, so let's go up here and change the flow all the way down to like 2%. Different people use different amounts. Depends on your, your, your curves layer that you created. But now I can use my right and left bracket keys again to resize. And another thing to note is that, you know, the further out you are, the, the more you can kind of notice uh, the the light and the dark as you zoom way in it's not as apparent right what you need to do so you don't want to zoom in too far I'm comfortable here and I'm just I'm on dodge which is lightened so I'm just going to start going and maybe I'll just kind of lighten some of this right here it's real subtle just so it blends a little better right You don't want to make the whole thing flat, right? You still want contour, but you just want to get these, some of these areas here. See, I'm blending it. There was a dark spot there. I'm just kind of blending it in. It's a little darker there, real lightly. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want to spend all day on this, <laughs> which you can do, I guess. But this is the my least favorite thing about editing is dodging is this kind of called micro dodge and burn. I love to burn the arms and the legs and get that or dodge the arms and the legs and get that sheen on them. That's what dodging and burning does. You get that sheen, that streak down the, you know, you can get it naturally by applying you know, moisturizer to the skin, uh, but you can enhance it with dodge. And then see, so dodge it and make it lighter on the arms. And then you can burn on the, around it and make the, the, you know, the shadows darker and it just brings out the contour. That's from dodging and burning. This is more of a micro dodge and burn. So it's, it's less apparent, but it makes a difference, makes a big difference. 
This is a tough one, actually. I'm having a hard time uh, seeing where I need to work. And you, know, you can go to this black and white layer. You can modify the yellows, too. All right. You can bring the yellows up or down. And that helps a little bit. And I'm just resizing with the bracket keys, the brush, as I'm going. So here's where I talked about earlier. Just kind of, let's ease this transition a little bit. Right? that down a little bit and so here's some good, real light in here you don't want to create a, a light spot in the dark but I just see some real dark areas here that I'm going to lightly hit come back up here and then this is fine this is the light the rim light hitting from the side so then I'll work come down here kind of lighten this up a little bit Now we just got, you know, there's, there's, I don't even think there's a base, any base makeup here. Um, sometimes the way that makeup artists supply makeup, they make our job a lot easier. You don't have to do a lot of this because the makeup just takes the light. This is a real, I don't think there's even any on here. It's a real light uh, makeup job. I think just the eyes. Which is what you want for your digital usually. They don't want a ton of makeup. They just want to see you, what you really look like. See, I'm just kind of easing these transitions between the dark and the light. Real tedious, to be honest with you. And I wouldn't want to do this for a lot of them. And I'm really not, you can... These are pretty light as it is, but you can come in here with the dog and kind of accentuate these lighter parts here. I still want to get this right here. It's bugging me. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm not going to get in and do micro. There's spots in here that I could do like super micro dodge and burn. I can go to burn here and I see some like light spots here and here that I want to blend. Maybe a little bit here, a little bit right there. Usually in the dark areas, that's where you want to burn to fill in some light spots, you know. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Really hard to see what you need to do when you get this close in. I probably just made that spot a little worse. Some of these retouchers, they really get in here and they spend a lot of time doing this I don't have that kind of patience so this was kind of a light version of Dodge and Murray. I'm going to take off the helper layer and that looks pretty good and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit let me turn Dodge and Burn off not a huge difference turn it back on so you can see that's off and then on so you can see it just kind of just evens things out just a little bit and I did kind of a quick job there but now just in here I can see that you know sometimes you want to turn off the helper layer you can so you can see the skin tones and make sure that things look even so there was a dark spot right there that I dodged you know, I could come in and dodge some of this here. And you can hit some of these highlights. Just come here and kind of just do that. Come in here. I want to keep that dark part there because it's con like in here because it's contour, you know. That's really, that's all I'm going to do with the dodge and the burn. I'm, I'm happy with that. I didn't want to do a lot. I just want to hit a few spots. So I'll switch back over to my mouse.
Okay, so now what I could do, I don't need to, but I, if you want to add some pop to the eyes, you can create a curves layer. Again, bump it up. Look at the irises, about right there. Now remember I said I want to turn off, I don't want it on everything. I'm just going to want to put the lightness in the irises. So I'm going to hit Control i to mask it or hide it, hide the effect. And then I will come back with a brush. Again, make sure it's hardness zero. And this time I'm going to bring my flow, I'm just kind of guessing here, up to like 20%. Let me go back over to my pen and tablet. I use that for here too. And I'm going to actually kind of zoom way in here so I can see the eyes. And really what I want to hit, let me just the size of my brush here, is you see these, when you get these uh, catch lights here from the softbox, you get right here, that's almost an echo of that where the light is bouncing from this part of the eye over to the other part of the eye and you can kind of come in here see here's a see that kind of come in there and accentuate that and i'm just brushing kind of lightly i don't want to give her alien eyes and i'm going to hit control zero i just want to see you know kind of if it's too much or so it's a little bit too much to me. And so what I can do instead of going back and redoing it, you know, I can come up and I can take this opacity, make sure my layer is selected and I can bring it down. And that just brings the effect down to like 70%. So I just gave it a little tiny bit of pop, right? The only other thing I can think of to do here, and I'm really nitpicking, is maybe get this little piece of hair here. Um, you don't want to, when you do this kind of stuff, you don't want to make the hair too perfect or it looks fake. It almost looks like I like cleaned it up over here. It's just perfect. Uh, shout out again to Cynthia. She did the hair and the makeup. I mean, it just looks perfect. So I would probably, and nobody's going to be looking at this really. <laughs> it's just, you know. Uh, I'm nitpicking, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do a right here. I'm going to choose the quick selection tool. You might have something else there, object selection or the magic wand. You just click and hold, left click and hold down. You get your menu here, what you want. Choose quick selection tool. Again, use your left bracket to. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter here because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a select subject. Hit that. If for some reason the select subject doesn't work, like it gives you an error or something, make sure that you don't have this group selected. Um, it's context sensitive, so if you have a group selected, it doesn't know what to do. So make sure you have like a layer selected, like curves or or background or something, All right? So it automatically went in there and selected my subject for me. Now you know in this fine hair areas. It's not going to be perfect, but that's fine because really what I want to get is this right here. And it actually selected part of that. So I'm going to hold down my alter option key and that's going to put a minus in my little selection thing. And I'm going to click right there to subtract from the selection. All right. Maybe I'll subtract a little bit more. Okay. So I've got her selected. I'm trying to isolate her from the background, but I want to work on the background. So if I, what I need to do is right click and choose select inverse. That selects everything outside here. So she's not selected anymore. This stuff out here is all selected, right? So then I can work over here. Like for instance, set my, get my clone stamp tool, opacity a hundred percent. I'm going to change my flow to 30%. Because I want to do a real subtle brushing effect here. Okay. And I'm going to get a uh, sample selection of, say, right here that's white. And I'm going to come over here. You see if I hover over, you can see it's going to paint. Sort of like painting white, but it's I'm grabbing white from over here. And I'm just going to start brushing right here. All right, just to kind of remove some of that stuff. 
and nothing's happening. Why? This is another got you. Because I'm sitting here and I'm trying to work on a curves layer. That's not going to work. I need a new layer. Can't tell you how many times when I was learning Photoshop, I would be following along and I thought I got every step and either they didn't mention it or, or something else, but uh, we're going on to a new step here and we're doing some edits. So we're not on that, that curves layer anymore. We are going to create a new blank layer. Okay. So select here, sample layer, and now start brushing in. Voila, it's working now. Okay. Kind of just clean up some of this stuff here. Like I said, uh, you don't want it to be perfect. Like that right there looks kind of natural. You don't want like you don't want it to look like a cutout, right? So that's why I'm gonna leave some of this this hair here. I just want to get that one spot. And I even don't mind that there either. It looks very natural. If I get that too, and I get every little piece here, she looks like a cutout and it looks fake. I just wanted to get that one little spot. So I'm going to click over here on this, just this rectangular marquee tool, marquee tool, and then just click off to the side over here and that just deselects everything. Okay. So I got that one little spot there. Okay. And that just about does it. I mean, she is she was perfection to begin with, but now she's even, I don't know how she could get any more perfect than she already was, but I'm doing my best to try. So, um, that is it. Like I said, this is for, you know, digitals for the model for her agency. They don't want anything fancy. They want to see her, uh, just how she is. They don't want a bunch of fancy makeup, a bunch of fancy skin smoothing and all that mess. Don't make it Instagrammy, make it real natural. Uh, so that's what we've done here. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging in there. Have a good one.